Okay, what a great way to uh, kickstart the event, really setting the scene. Um, and we're going to move into another great session now. This is uh, How Bauer Media Set the Blueprint for European Expansion. I'd like to welcome up to the stage uh, Greg Rimmer, CEO of MediaTel, who will be in conversation with Richard Dawkins, President of Audio at Bauer Media Group. Please welcome them. Thank you. Coming close, Richard. Oh, equivalent of a fireplace. I've always, I've always asked Steve to get me a fireplace. He's yet to do it. Yeah, maybe, maybe not in the summer. Health and safety. I can <laughs> stop it from, uh, from having that here. Uh, well, uh, great to hear Lucy and Thierry talk about um, radio as part of the audio re revolution. Uh, you're uh, here in your new role as head of uh, Bauer Audio, not not Bauer Radio, as I worked with for probably you know, 30 years of my, my agency life and we at Redetail work with Bauer as a great partner in our technology business but it's very much in the UK again my, both my agency side was, was UK and the technology we work with we work uh, only in the UK so perhaps you'd like to tell us about your new role and your ambitions for uh, Bauer in, uh, uh, in Europe. Sure. Good to see you Greg thank you for inviting me good to see everybody here as well. So, um, indeed, I was appointed uh, to the role of president for Bauer Media Audio just over a month ago. Um, and in this role, I work with uh, all of our markets. Um, we are operational in nine countries in Europe, um, and we have leading businesses um, across all of them, number one in seven, and with a close challenger in uh, two markets. Um, the UK is one, uh, but only one of, of nine, and we have a very strong focus across the continent. And in each of our markets, we're both a radio operator and an innovator in digital services as well. And so we, we focus not only on maintaining a very healthy core product with high reach and everything you've heard this morning so far, but also ensuring that we are looking far into the future and creating new innovative products and services for not only our audiences, but our commercial partners as well. Okay, and so uh, it, it would be, uh, for say, the ambition is to, to grow the number of territories as well as the number of services, or uh, is it, <coughs> are you acquisitive? Are you, are you looking for uh, new opportunities uh, beyond those nine markets? Well, we set out an ambition a number of years ago to grow our audio business. We saw the opportunity um, from audiences listening to more audio, and we forecast that that will continue to grow and that the value of the market will continue to reflect that listening. So we set out a plan to grow, and you know, despite the pandemic, which clearly impacted on the wider economy, we remained really focused on building out our business. And so that's been both uh, nurturing our existing operations, and you'll have seen in the UK the way we've been building out our brands and our, our content, but also in terms of launching new digital products, Octave, obviously, in the UK with news. Uh, but also, as you referenced, Greg, we've, um, we've also entered two new markets over the last two years in Ireland and Portugal, and we see opportunity for the future. We see it across distribution content and also in our commercial opportunities. So we will continue to identify those opportunities and invest where we can create value. Great, okay. Perhaps, again, we started this event uh, about four or five years ago as a, as a radio planning summit, and it was in a, a basement of a, a small hotel. We're now in a, a big auditorium as we've made it, not only audio, yeah, but Europe. So perhaps, again, I think uh, looking at the attendee list, most people will be from the UK, but perhaps you could talk about some of the successes you've had, whether it be in Ireland, Portugal, or other markets, where you think the, the, UK, um, the UK world could, could learn from. I mean, first of all, my, my comment about more people are listening to more audio, I think is true universally. And that's partly because technology innovation, you know, it doesn't ultimately respect borders. Technology can travel across markets. So there's innovation everywhere. And you know, the way we look at our business is to reflect the market dynamics in each of our different businesses. So, um, for example, uh, we launched a, an ad network uh, in the Nordics during the course of the, the pandemic. We saw an opportunity there in terms of bringing together a wide range of partner publishers 
and to develop a new proposition that we could take to the commercial market there. There was a gap, uh, and so we, we took that, and we've learned a huge amount in, in doing that and been building out a really strong data proposition. So that's in the, the ad network space. Uh, we were very early in podcasts um, in Sweden, um, and we have a really strong center of excellence there, particularly around technology and in the way that... Uh, Podcasts are distributed, and the way we insert uh, our commercial messages in, into the podcast themselves. So, we we have a um, a very strong solution there that we use across our markets, and we've been using in the UK as well. So we, you know, we kind of celebrate innovation where 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 it um, emerges in each market, and we then try to reflect that um, as markets develop elsewhere. Okay, and. At least you touched on this. I mean, uh, audio is yeah very fashionable with advertising and uh, advertisers and agencies at the moment. I mean, there's there's uh, lots of people doing you know, interesting things there. But radio is still seen as seen as an unloved media, or uh, certainly doesn't get some of the uh, kudos that perhaps it deserves. I mean, is it, you think that's fair? And you, you know, what are you doing anything specifically within Bauer to look at how? Yeah, yeah, Octave working with um, the, the more traditional linear teams. You know, what's, what's your view on the, uh, that, that dichotomy of the, uh, yeah, the, the, fashionable, the fashionable kid and the, uh, the perhaps uh, uh, the, the ugly duckling that, that radio has been seen? I mean, ra radio is a term. It was mentioned um, um, by uh, Lucy and Thierry earlier on. You know, it's not just a box in the corner of the room, and radio has proven itself to adapt to opportunity over decades and continues to do so. I mean, I, I don't believe this idea that radio is unloved is, is that widely, widely held. I mean, if you look at... Well, if you look not, at by, the, not by consumer, again. But, I, but, I, e, but even commercially, I mean, if you look at the client count, if you look at the types of businesses that, uh, that we work with, they're of all sizes, um, in all geographies, buying in different ways. And I think for those businesses, you know, they understand the value value of radio. I think you know, there are new companies who emerge all the time, obviously, new startups. And I think it's really important that, as an industry, we educate those types of businesses to understand the power of radio, because it is a really powerful medium in getting the messages across. But you know, if, there are, if there are people who have that perception that it's somehow unfashionable or, or unloved, then you know, we just need to show them the evidence and, and the numbers. Um, you know, the high reach, 75% plus across Europe, nearly 90% in the UK. Uh, this is, you know, this is weekly reach. This is high levels of engagement. And I think what's so powerful about radio is it's the mix. It's not only high reach, but the, the environment is high quality. You can trust it. The audience is engaged. The recall levels are high, and the target groups are really attractive. Radio does appeal across the full spectrum of audience groups, and I think we need to, you know, we need to we need to think how we message radio here because it it isn't a box in the room. It's it is already ported into digital spaces, and you know, radio already grows into new formats. There's an alignment between podcasts and between radio. And the commercial offer as well sits across these different propositions. So maybe there are people where we have to work harder to explain the benefits, but I do not think it's unloved okay, yeah, across okay. the market. Yeah, okay. We had a um, similar debate in a TV conference around television again, and uh, yeah, Lucy's, Lucy's equivalent uh, think box again. Yeah, TV is everything, and yeah, so, so I'll just call it video then. And uh, do we have the same? Do we have the same issue with radio and audio? I mean, if, if, audio, if audio is seen as <clears throat> loved by everyone, why don't, why don't we just move that? Or is it, or is it important to keep that, those distinctions of you know, stream it, streaming and uh, podcasts? Again, you look at Lucy's charts, the, the, the amount of noise that podcasts get versus where it is in, in actually consumer listening, it, it, I mean, that, that's totally out of balance, isn't it? So would we be better off just, as, as Bauer have done, yeah, you're, you are Bauer Audio, you're, you're doing all of those things so that you avoid... You avoid the problem of people going, well, actually, I'm not interested in your radio product over here, but yeah, talk to me about podcasts for Heat or Grazia or something like that. I mean, audio is the overall medium, clearly. It's what people hear. 
we, we are proud of our radio business. You know, we, we, um, it's very strong. It is growing. I mean, in the latest Ray Jars in the UK, we recorded our highest ever weekly reach of 21 million listeners, which is a really scaled platform. And commercial radio continues to grow as a medium. And we see that not just in the UK, but elsewhere as well. So I think we can get hung up on this question of, is it radio, is it audio? In the end, it's about the relationship with the audience, the, you know, the content that they're consuming, and the way that we package that up into attractive propositions for our, our commercial partners. And that applies across all of these different types of content and formats, whether it's live radio, whether it's on demand, whether it's podcast. Yeah, OK. Yeah. And again, I, I think I agree. I suppose we're, uh, today we're probably... <clears throat> Not entirely, but we're preaching to the converted slightly here because, again, uh, you know, it's people self-select to come to an, uh, an audio conference. But, again, I'm delighted to see it. it's, it's nearly the same size now as our TV, where well, we still call it TV, not video, uh, video conference. Um, is there, are there innovations which you know, Bauer are doing particularly that you would encourage you know, your you know, competitors, some of them are in the room, your... your commercial partners in the room to, to look out for? And are they coming from the UK or Ireland or the Nordics or, or further afield? You know, what, are, what are the innovations which, which you, you see coming in the near future that you think uh, we should be looking out for? We continue to build out our digital products, whether that's in content, in distribution, or in the services we're offering our commercial partners. And clearly, we are bringing um, even more data um, into the products um, as, as, as we can. And that's something that we're continuing to grow. I think the point I'd make is, is, is that a demand from, is, is, is that something that you, you want to be ahead of the game or, or because of yeah, the, the gap of brands? Are you, are you being asked by, yeah, particularly like the big agency holding groups, to provide those data solutions? It's a further set of opportunities to commercialise what we do. So, you know, again, the way to think about our business is it's not one overall product. We have a number of different um, types of audience, types of listening, different environments, and we package that up in different ways to deliver the types of value that our commercial partners are looking, looking for. And for some of those, they want to buy increased data-led products. So that's what we build, and that's what we're delivering. And... You know, to kind of reinforce this point, what's wonderful about audio is that we can place it in so many different contexts, um, across different platforms, in different environments, and that is giving us huge opportunity to deliver what our commercial partners are looking for. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tie you down on something. Give, give us one thing that you're, you're, you're doing, yeah, that's coming up, that's, yeah... Yeah, perhaps you can, yeah, it might be in the public domain or it, yeah, it might be something which uh, you know is coming and you want to tell yeah, everyone about that you can be most proud of. I'm not doing a big reveal of something. No, 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 uh, no complete, not, complete, not completely new. I, I suppose it's just that there'll be, some, yeah, I, yeah. I know your business quite well, there'll be some yeah. people in, in the audience that know it very well as well. Yeah. But if, if there's, again, it's that, you know, to Lucy's point, we're, 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 we're one voice. If there's, if there's a way, a strong audio revolution, I would think, is good for, for everyone. Yeah, and that, and that, goes, that goes for the... I think, what, I think what everybody should look out for is continued innovation from us in all parts of our business. And I think what you will see is that um, in our kind of radio portfolio, you will see continued investment and growth as, as we build that out further. And alongside that, you will see continued innovation in new content formats, um, in, in new distribution spaces and also in the way we're enhancing our commercial offer. And that is going to continue and you will see more of that in the coming months. Okay. All right. We're amazingly out of time already, but let, let's, let's go. And you've talked about the diverse, I mean, Bauer as a group is, is uh, a, yeah, a diverse media group compared to, compared to some. You're, you're in interesting geography. So what, what does diversity inclusion mean to you know, Bauer Audio and how, how, do you, how do you deliver? Obviously, that again is, is very much in the zeitgeist at the moment. How are, how are Bauer Audio delivering on the, the d &I debate? Yeah. I mean, I think the first, the first thing to say is we're fortunate in, in Bauer Media because we operate in nine different markets. They all have you know, really different cultures, interesting cultures, reflecting their national identity. 
and we really love that. We celebrate the different perspectives that we have culturally in the organisation. We actually think that gives us real strengths as well because it fosters increased creativity. And then obviously in the DNI agenda, there are so many different um, areas that we're looking at, whether that's socioeconomic, whether it's ethnicity, whether it's gender, sexuality, disability, etc. And they're really important. We can see that um, you know, where we truly reflect society and our audiences, that makes our business better. I think as an industry, we have more to do, um, but we are a universal service. We, we reach all audience groups, and it is important that we fully reflect that audience. So um, it's massively important to us as an organisation, something we talk a lot about and that we're, we're doing a lot to improve. Well, good, to, good to hear that, and I think it's something we'd all agree with. Well, yeah, we are out of time. Uh, uh, please join me in. Uh, uh, I wish you well in your new role. Yeah, one month in, we'll perhaps get you back in a year's time and, and hear what you've done there. But uh, please join me in thanking Richard for his time this morning. Thank you, Greg. Thank you.